I'm going to double talk on the information which I'm not going to be able to do. Um, the title's a bit of a giveaway. It's intended to indicate that I don't know a great deal about corpora, which is certainly true. Um, but the idea is that I'm going to tell you what I have discovered as quickly as I can. Um, five steps I've taken to try to learn from other people about these things. And then open it up to you. I hope there are people here who know more about it than I do. Uh, I know there are some who don't. Um, and then see if we can come to any kind of view as to whether these are potentially useful for us as teachers or not. Um, so running through what I've done so far, um, first step was when I first arrived here in 2009, fresh off the centre, I found myself teaching in room 510 where there was on the notice board up there a reference to the Collins Corpus. I'd never heard of it, never been mentioned on the Zelda course, and I had a little nose and tried typing in the web address and had a look around and thought, oh, well, that's all very interesting, but I think there are more important priorities for me at the moment, like working out how to fill three hours of time with the German <laughs> lawyer sitting opposite me and things like that. So I just put it on one side and forgot about it for a couple of years. Um, the Collins Corpus, by the way, was free in those days, back in 2009, but isn't anymore. So although that sign is still up in room 510, you, you have to pay to get access to it now, although you can do a one-month free trial, which I've done, but it's expired. Um, so before we carry on, I uh, just want to check and see whether everybody knows what a corpus is and what concordance and concordance mean. I know one person yesterday asked me what the hell that meant. Can anyone give me a definition of a corpus? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Sally's being volunteered. No, no. I really, well, my understanding, I don't understand concordance and concordance, but my understanding of corpus is it's like a body of information of what people actually say. Yeah. So it actually tracks how language yeah. changes and evolves yeah. over time. Well, it's a body. It's, 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 a, it's a bank of language, yeah. if you like, a sort of... Um, yeah, a bank of language, either written or spoken, um, which is stored on a computer. And then the concordance is an extract from that bank of language, which shows the word that you've searched and words either side of the word that you've searched. And the concordance is simply the software that seems that you use to to get at those concordances. As simple as that. Okay. So, what did I do next? After uh, a couple of years later, um, by the, by then the uh, IHL teacher DIY development site was up and running, and um, something popped up on onto that relating to corpora, and I thought, oh, time to investigate again. So I went onto that, and I found something very useful there by Jim and Dale explaining about corpora, how to use how to use them and why you would want to. So I read that, didn't do anything about it, I just read it and thought very interesting. Um, and there was a link there also to a, I think an earlier presentation that um, that Andy had done on TechStat, which is some kind of software that you can use for creating your own corpus move to do that. Um, so I had a little look at that as well. That's in the form of, um, of uh, a picture of Andy's screen and him talking you through how to do it. So if you want to get to those things, if you were interested in having a look at those, you go to the um, that IHL teacher DIY site. You go to, at the top of the screen, tools we use and then you choose either using corpora or text app, depending on where your interests lie. Um, we've got time to show you that. So, uh, Jim and Dale's uh, thing about corpora contains a, a link to this downloadable step-by-step -step guide on how to sign up for the British National Corpus, BNC. 
and how to do your first search. So I have boldly done that. Um, but it it really is just the very, I've signed up and I've followed their advice and I've figured out how to do a very simple search. There's a lot more to it than I have really discovered yet. Have you paid? You don't pay. It's free. And it's a, um, when you go onto the website, it, it, it's, it's, there's an introduction there that describes to you it's a vast body of language. Um, you don't pay and there's a little, um, the introduction there describes it and then there's a five minute tour which you can do which demonstrates what what you what you can get out of the site. It doesn't actually tell you how to do it, not the way that I can understand, but it dangles the carrot and tells you what's there for you to play with. And that um, is the web address that you need to get into that. Um, the introduction that I just mentioned on the British National Caucus website tells you the things that you can do. Uh, it says you can search for a word or a phrase. Uh, you can search for the words around it. It's colonies. You can check the frequency of a word or a phrase in this vast corpus of language. You can search um, according to different registers. So if you're teaching a lawyer, you can go to a legal one. If you're teaching a doctor, you can go to a doctor, a medical one, and so on. Spoken all sorts of different ones there. Um, you can try and find out about the meaning of similar words. What's the difference between little and small? When do we use one, when do we use the other, that sort of thing. You can find synonyms. I haven't figured out how to do that yet, <laughs> but it's there apparently. Um, so what uh, what's in it for teachers? We know we know it's useful. This kind of this kind of information is useful for academics. It's useful for for people who compile dictionaries. It's useful for people who are writing course books. But <coughs> why why might we be interested in it? That's the the real question. Can anyone think of any reason? I suppose vast number of people. Why don't you talk to the person next to you and see if you can think of any reason why we might be interested and what Jim and Dale might be telling us um, we could use all this amount of information for. Frequency of use of a particular yeah. phrase, for example, yeah. or uh, finding examples of use, actual examples of use yeah. of particular pieces of language. Authentic language, yeah. 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 Anything else? Anyone else would like to volunteer? Language, so that you know when you're working with students at different levels what is appropriate for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other thoughts? I was going to check the structure, how it the use structure, the word is used, yeah. prepositions, yeah. what precedes, what follows. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Just shows I, think, I think they also inform a kind of, yeah, the, the course book idea that they've already, you know, in a way when we meet the materials, it's already. Of course, we're writers have already consulted exactly. So exactly. Yeah. 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 Yes. So my real question is whether it's worth our while doing that job for ourselves, or whether whether it's just too labour intensive. I like what you said about the legal. You use legal language. I had to. I don't. Oh, well, I think I could. could. But I had a situation <laughs> this morning where I re it was a medical piece of language, and it wasn't. The meaning wasn't available really in any dictionary. The medical dictionary didn't give any example sentences, and actually, if I could have used that this morning, yeah. it would have been really helpful. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I think it can. I think there is quite a lot of potential there for English for specific purposes, yeah. actually, yeah. really, yeah. Where, where the course books are not, you know, they're not there in sufficient yeah. numbers to provide yeah. you with enough material. So, also for writing as well, of course. Yes. For writing for exams think, or writing yeah. for academic, academic writing. writing. Yeah. Could be very useful. Searching for synonyms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could this if be? I could work out how to search for synonyms. Could this be uh, an autonomous learning tool for students post course? I think the, with the more curious students, I've got one at the moment who keeps saying to me, "Well, you know, can I use it like this? And can I use this word like this?" And you know, to be able to to demonstrate that mm. she could answer those questions for herself once she's back home in Russia, I think. She's the kind of student you might be interested in. Anyway, let's see what um, Jim and Dale suggested. So their suggestions were you know, to prove to the sceptical student that's just what we say. Um, to confirm a hunch if you're not sure yourself. Um, frequency, word frequency, as Alan said. Um, show collocations. Um, 
show common lexical items in discourse. I might sound more convincing once I've finished my teacher knowledge course. Um, I might know what I'm talking about there. Um, show the difference between written and spoken language, given that you can search them separately. That's quite nice. Show the meaning of idioms. They're quite, you know, if you, if you actually show the idioms in, in context and tell the students to work it out for themselves. Um, show stylistic and semantic restrictions, so register, because that's connected with written and spoken, and how we actually use words. Um, <coughs> syntactic restrictions, what you were saying, Helen, about prepositions and so on. Um, the sort of positive and negative connotations of a word, you can demonstrate that quite nicely, um, and demonstrate the usual grammatical structure. And when you have a word with multiple meanings, you can you can highlight that quite nicely. Um, what's the benefit for students? A few suggestions that Jim and Dale gave. Um, obviously, teachers can can create uh, worksheets, and I've got some examples of worksheets here, which, when we come on to discuss this in more detail later, you might want to have a look at. But they, they, if you go to their um, thing on the DIY site. They've, they've got links to various worksheets that they've done for themselves. Um, <coughs> deepen their understanding of the meanings of words. So you look a word up in a dictionary and then you can go and find authentic examples of the word being used, which may help you understand it better. Um, and correct their own errors, uh, especially errors of collocation. You, you give them their work, it's full of errors, and then you give them selected um, extracts from the corpus and get them to figure out where they've gone wrong themselves. Possibly they'll remember their mistakes better, correct them uh, themselves, and develop their independence, as Kevin was saying. Creating your own corpus, why would you want to do it? Um, <laughs> uh, Andy says it's very good for revising. He, he types up all the vocabulary. Well, when he's teaching on a course and then creates a corpus of all the new vocabulary and uses that to revise vocabulary. Um, and I think it's useful for creating materials for uh, special purposes. There is, um, on that DIY development site, as I say, this uh, description of how to, how to use the text stat software to create your own corpus. Um, Andy tells you that it's on the H drive and it's very easy to find. I can't find it, but <laughs> I'm sure it's there. It's just me being stupid. Um, so I've looked at that and then I also found by Googling um, a written tutorial by a bunch of translators um, that takes you through step by step and that, you know, actually do this, do that. And I think that would be worth trying if, if one actually wanted to give this a go. And then there, there is other software apart from TechStack, which I'll mention in a moment. So, next step on my journey, about a year later, I saw this talk, Corpus Linguistics and Language Teaching Advertised at St Giles, in their teacher development program. <coughs> and I went along to that, hoping that you know, the scales would fall from my eyes and I would understand it all, but unfortunately it wasn't quite that useful. Talk given by an academic, and she there was a lot of time spent on the academic stuff and not much on practical uses in the classroom. Um, but I did glean from her that there are other corporate, not just the Collins and the BMC, but also um, a big American one, Coca, and a spoken one called Cancord, I think it was, and the Voice, Vienna, something, something, mm. one for English as a lingua franca. Some of them are free, some of them aren't. Um, and she mentioned this uh, site Lex Tutor, which is a, she raved about a Canadian website uh, for learning vocabulary and it includes a concordancer. And she mentioned these other um, programs that you can download uh, AntConc, which is free, and Wordsmith, which you have to pay for. And you can use it, I think, rather like TechStack to load up your own, your own um, language and then search it and fiddle with it. So I have Googled a bit on those three things, Lex Tutor, and Conk and Wordsmith, and I found this guidance as to how, how to do to do those. Um, and Conk in particular, the guidance is by the guy who designed it. Um, and uh, the, 
several um, little things like Andy did, um, the videos where you see his screen and he talks you through it. That's, that's actually quite, looks quite useful. Um, Wordsmith, I haven't really investigated it because I'm too mean to pay the large amount of money that you need to pay to get access to it, so it doesn't seem to be much point. Um, and in preparation for this, I did Googled a bit more and did some reading um, on the website. Again, a lot of it is written by academics and is not, not terribly practical. Um, but I did find these three uh, articles which I thought were more practical and had some ideas in them um, and some other links to other things which I haven't had time to read yet. Um, so suggestions that I gleaned from that reading, um, first of all in relation to teaching collocations. Um, somebody suggested you get a selection of sentences. You, you do a search using a keyword, you get the selection of sentences, the concordances, then you delete the keyword and get the student to guess what the keyword is. Um, get the students to find what look like collocations in a text and then search the corpus to see whether they're common, whether it's worth spending time learning them. Um, teacher supplies a text with errors in, for example, <coughs> errors about make and do, and get the student to use the, the concordances to correct their errors. Um, and students create gap fills for each other. Um, mistakes of count countable and uncountable nouns, again, students can use the corpus to correct their own errors. Mistakes of grammar and syntax, students use the corpus to work out grammar rules or syntax rules, for example, you know, how, how you use suggest and how you use recommend, how you use explain. Um, get the students to correct their grammar errors with the help of corpus. You can do that with verbs followed by infinitive or gerund. And words with multiple meanings. You get, a, you know, look up a word like company, which has got lots of meanings. And then get the students to group the, the sentences, the concordances, according to which meaning they're an example of. So that's really what I've learned so far. Nothing that I've actually taken into the classroom because I don't feel sufficiently confident yet to, to use it, to be honest. I, I feel a bit overwhelmed by the, the technology at the moment and not sufficiently confident to use it in the classroom. And my question really is, um, does anybody have any ideas about whether this is worthwhile? Do, do I just give up at this stage and think, leave it to the textbook writers, or the dictionary writers? Or is there potentially some value in this? Do we think this is worthwhile pursuing with a view to using it in our teaching? Will we be better teachers if we use this? And if so, how do we, how do we take this forward? Those exercises that you talked about just on the last slide, wouldn't you just practice those for 10 or 15 minutes as part of a repertoire of what you're doing? Yeah, if, if you could get past the stage that I'm at now where I, I, you know, I'm, for example, I was trying a game this morning, I did some searches this morning and got all the concordances up on the screen, I can't figure out how to, how to save that and get it onto a piece of paper that I can take into the classroom. I tried copying and pasting and it comes out as gobbledygook. So there is a way, I think, of saving it as a list. And presumably you can then print it out, but I can't at the moment. That's the screen. But is that the screen? But then you get all the gubbins around the edge as well, wouldn't you? Um, yeah, I mean, Nick has spoken it. about yeah. it previously and how to do it and how to sort of edit it down. Mm. Uh, but it does take a bit of practice to be able to get mm. it cut it, the quantity down into, the, into manageable, digestible chunks mm. of language, um, which is purely a technical thing of learning how to do that. Yeah. Once you know how to do that, it's very simple. But I didn't say it's very simple, I don't know how to do it. No. <laughs> Nick, do, well, I, you know, I, I definitely get the impression from my reading that not many teachers are doing it. Mm. And there could be a reason for that. It could be it's too much work. For the amount of value you get out of it, I just I don't know. Has anybody got any experience at all of actually doing it in class? No. So it's a bit of a rarefied thing. It would be nice if we could actually do our own corpus yeah. because sometimes the students come with their own document. Yeah. Uh, now the students with is working with tenders, and if 
it were possible to scan the document. I don't know if they have this text recognition function yeah. on the then instead of typing it up, yeah. then of course it would be useful because then we can sort of prioritize the vocabulary, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the adjectives, yeah. let's say, or the structures even, mm -hmm. and then work just on this document. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, I, I see potential for it with law, yeah. for example, yeah. getting yeah. You know, contracts into, into a corpus and then finding the sort of typical structure of clauses. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is an application that um, when we get, I, I think we're going to get an iPad, perhaps eventually. When when that happens, there will be an application that you can scan any piece of written text, mm -hmm. and you can then just email it to yourself or whatever. And so that that will be a really really easy way to get the, the student's text, and then you have it. You don't have to type it up again, and that it will take thirty seconds to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hand out the. Um, the worksheets, six copies of these, you can look at those. These are the ones that Jim and Dale produced, just to see the kind of thing that they're, they're capable of producing, which I'm not. Because, I don't know, I just, I just feel you have to find a way through to those, those students who, are, who don't listen to you. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 Any other observations that anybody has? Is anybody interested in pursuing it at all? Or do you think it's a complete waste of time? You do think yeah. it's interesting, yeah. And it can all be on, on the Moodle, so you can follow these links. But it just means you have to sort of sit down for half an hour and look at it. Yeah, and it's intense. And play I promise with you, it's longer sit. than half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that's it's, why it's you've got to, you can't, you can't, you can't try to learn how to, all the things you can do no. with it. You've got yeah. to learn how to do one yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 And practice that, and that. you do one thing that you think is useful, and you practice doing that, yeah. and stay with that for the next yeah. month, two yeah. months, three months <laughs> before you progress. Yes, I think that could be right, because there, you know, there, there are ways of searching involving little symbols and things. You know, if you put the base word followed by an asterisk, that mm. will search for, I mean, mm. it's too much, I'm, I'm overloaded with information. Mm. Actually, I've read too much stuff now, and and I feel you know, definitely I'm suffering from information overload, and I don't know where to go next. And I think actually that's a very good suggestion that you just do do something simple, try it out, see see how it goes down with a student, and if, if it seems to work, then you feel encouraged and you keep going. I'm staggered with such a big group that nobody's ever they've not done it, Sally. Probably you you with your Techie, techie tendencies. No, I, mean, I, I tend to use, I do use learner dictionaries all the time, yeah. and I find that learner dictionaries, online learner dictionaries, you can access them quite quickly, and you it will show you collocate. So it does show you, I think, many of the things, doesn't it? As a corpus would do, but just doesn't have the same. Yeah, but a dictionary doesn't give you many examples, does it? If you Some of them will give you maybe four or five mm -hmm. different examples, mm -hmm. and then within each, so say a word has got, say, three or four meanings, they will give you three or four examples for each meaning. Yeah. So I find right. that quite useful because it's relatively simple. Do so you get more examples in an online dictionary than in a mm. hard I use the Oxford Learners Dictionary, and I find that quite useful. Right. It's the one I find the most useful. Doesn't do half of the things that that does. Mm. Yeah. I think corpus is more convincing yeah. in terms of the use or usage rather than yes. meaning because it's the best answer to the question how do we use it? How do we use it? Yeah, it's like this girl mm. keeps asking me this now can I say this? Can I say that? Mm. And give me an example of how to use this word. Mm. Mm. And, you know, yeah, I think it's, I think it's potentially quite, quite helpful, but you have to get to the stage where you feel really comfortable doing it means you're not hanging around and wasting their time.